Now, now, do you think that there's a big bubble coming right now? Because I know that what Michael Burry said about cryptocurrency, at least, is that you know it's it's inevitable that the bubble is going to pop, and we can already kind of see it happening. Right. And, and and what he's doing is nothing crazy. He's just saying, "All right, what are they really worth?" Right. And then he's saying, "Okay, how do we get to this assumption?" And then he goes through and breaks down what they're actually worth, and said, "Well, based off of our measures and stuff." These are worth X, but like the market is a hundred times greater than that. So, and that's never sustainable on past times. So, inevitably, it's going to crash. Yo, 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 and welcome back to Roy's podcast. I'm Roy Spencer. I'm Johnny Rodriguez. And this is Roy's podcast. So, yeah. what are we covering today, Roy? Well, we got a little bit of crypto action to talk to you about today, Johnny. We got that. We got uh, a breakdown of candlesticks. And then we're also looking towards breaking down this new company, RXRX, and seeing what we think of it. Awesome. And and something uh, I do want to talk about a little, you know, just to start it off is uh, Michael Burry. Because uh, for those of you that don't know, Michael Burry is uh, who the big short the movie is based off of. And what, what exactly, for those, you know, because a lot of people, I'm sure, don't know, what exactly was The Big Short? So, The Big Short was, like, the reason or the fundamental underlying behind, like, why the, kind of, like, the stocks or, like, why things were just overvalued right then. And kind of just, like, the, the looming um, pressures that, like, the stock market would sell off. And that's kind of all, like, very well kind of, like, explained, you know. I, I kind of put this book up, and I talked to you guys about it a little bit. But in this, uh, kind of, like, with the p- principles learned in this book, the, the Big Debt Crisis by Ray Dalio. But I kind of think that's, like, it justice on kind of explaining what they have going on and, like, key indicators that went into describing why the Big Short was going to come about. But it, it was a lot of going back to the reason that all this happened was, it, with like the housing market it got really heated because people were giving out loans to other people at such like a low rate that a lot of people were able to sign up and because the banks weren't taking that seriously and doing like good checks and trying to eliminate bad creditors or people that had poor credit they were just giving loans to everybody so these things were being lined up and housing was being there's just a lot of housing at the time as well and with that being on the market, like they're projecting that they're going to get a nice big like cash return from all that, from like the people that were doing the kind of investing in that. But what they failed to notice was that these people were um, not able to pay, or they were taking on these risks with the assumption that these people would be able to pay. But because of like all the forces on these people, they they weren't able to afford these houses and weren't able to pay them back. So inevitably, these these risks and securities and stuff that they had botched up and like put into like all one thing into risky loans, these things were definitely not going to be worth what they thought they were. And so therefore, these things like and especially the market and the stock prices around it were way overinflated based off of those estimates. And he just kind of dove in there and kind of just said because of like the unsupported risk levels around it there is like a good chance that like the market would crash and he's really good he takes a lot of what we call like fundamental analysis into these things which is just well logically thought out like reasons why the market would do what it's going to do and so and you're speaking about ray dalio right now right right i'm talking about ray dalio but i'm talking about how it's kind of kind of cool that a a lot of the people that like he works with i mean he is like a known investor and has been able to like systematically break down like what causes stuff like that and like the big short and future market crashes as well. But it, it's Mike, Michael Burry applied those principles to the like 2008 crash and like the big short based off of you know what he was seeing. But it's similar because they were look, using at overlying principles to describe that stuff. So so was Michael Burry betting like he was betting against the banks and hedge funds? In a sense, he was kind of betting that they'd gotten it wrong. He was just saying that these things aren't worth it, and they have a lot of liabilities that they are yet to, to take on because they had yet to be paid. Because people go to banks to get like loans, right? And they expect that in the future they're going to get money back from those people with interest, and that's how they make their money. But they gave out so much money because interest rates were so low that everybody was able to come in and afford it. 
Also, they weren't doing heavy background checks and stuff on if these people could actually afford these homes. So people were just me and you, right? <laughs> just these college students could go out and get a mansion. That's crazy. Like in Bellagio or something. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it looks like you guys might have a job someday. So here you go. Here's uh, here's this little slip. Go on in, get your car keys, and yeah, heck, pick up a house while you're at it. And Damn. you know, you, I, I, you guys said you were good for the money, and we're like, yeah, yeah, like, totally. oh for sure, then, dude, go go get it. Here, here's here's the keys to it. Just pay us back <laughs> every single month with twelve thousand dollars. Like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, sure. So you couldn't do that now. They've well, I mean. Not as much so. Mm -hmm. Well, but the economy goes through periods where government tries to like stimulate people getting into the market with lower interest rates and subsidized um, stuff, so that people will get excited and want to jump into the market. So, it, I mean, it goes through periods of like higher regulation, and that kind of cracks all this down. But and then like lower regulations to like get all this back down, and then people get into the market and get excited again. Okay. So But there are new security measures in place to make sure that something like that doesn't happen, but it's still there's still principles and stuff behind why um these things might happen again. Now now do you think that there's a big bubble coming right now? Because I know that what Michael Berry said about cryptocurrency at least is that, you know, it's it's inevitable that the bubble's gonna pop and we can already kind of see it happening. Right. And, and and what he's doing is nothing crazy. He's just saying, all right, what are they really worth? Right. And then he's saying, okay, how do we get to this assumption? And then he goes through and breaks down what they're actually worth and said, well, based off of our measures and stuff, these are worth X, but like the market is 100 times greater than that. So, And that's never sustainable on past times, so inevitably it's going to crash. And that's kind of what he was doing because he said that this thing was way way too too much and it had to come down eventually right which is a really good call i think he was really right about that but he also has like a, a lot of other big predictions about just where that's gonna that i think that's just the first bubble to crash but beyond that the, I, I think that there's other stuff in the, the midst coming for us in the economy that we'll see other things like that crash as well okay so um I, and I, I know, so just to bring up real quick, because it kind of goes together, uh, Warren Buffett recently retired. Uh, and now, does that, do you think him retiring and giving away, like, his shares to charity, uh, do you think that's going to affect, like, or just, I guess, him retiring? I don't know, because I don't know how actively involved he is, you know, mm -hmm. in terms, like, how old he is now and everything, or how, right. how active he was, like, with Berkshire and ha Hathaway. Um, but do you think like him retiring is gonna lower that you know companies? I think he's getting out at some sort of a good time because there there is in our future a, a more of a, a looming problem for some parts of the market. So maybe he's getting out at the right time. This is the market is at a high right now and right. he can say that with like being the investor that he was he finished at a high and he had a really good career so i can see why he's doing it and he you know there is reasons ahead that we're gonna be in like a crisis yeah with all of kind of just the key indicators and what the key indicators kind of really sum up is that there's new buyers in the market they're excited to buy stuff so robin hood basically take care takes care of that yeah and the, there's there's a bunch of bullish sediment, meaning there's people that really want to get in there and buy stuff, and they think that right now is a great time to buy, but it's not because you know piling in, and so like the price is should be worth this, but like so many people are piling in that it drives the price way up. Right. And it's it's he also talks about just having unsupported risks in terms of that because they they um people aren't able to actually afford these risks that they're taking on right now. So when the big guys start seeing that and say that these prices are way too much and they pull their big sum of money out, then everybody's screwed. And that causes a domino effect. you just like, oh, crap, like this company fell 10%. I got to get out. And then, you know, right. because you put so much money into there and you're thinking that this company was the greatest stuff ever, and then you see all these big guys pull their money out and the, st <laughs> the stock gets absolutely slammed, you know, you kind of like, 
maybe I got to step back myself. And then at that point, you've lost like a big sum of money and everybody after that is kind of hurting. Right. And that causes like this bubble to pop and then everybody kind of gets out of the market. And you can kind of tell that because like the way we have it right now, market participation is kind of at a high for like a tenure. So and stuff. So uh, would you say that right now, like a lot, like for example, with the cryptos, you know, it was going up, going up, going up, and then uh, you know it just plummeted. It popped right. essentially. Do you now? Do you, mm-hmm. do you think that like? And I know you've said this to me before. Like the company can't keep up with the amount of investors that are investing in it. Like. What it's right, worth. the company itself isn't worth that. At that moment. The company itself, yeah, at that moment. It's worth whatever it's actually bringing in. Revenues, costs, and all that stuff goes into, like, a profit. And then the profit's divided by, like, shares and, and stuff like that. And it should be getting its formula based off of what it's actually making, not just because. But you can buy something at any price that you want. And so it's basically, like, fool's gold. If you're able to fool somebody into thinking that the price is going to be higher in the next few days then and you sell your shares to them, and they would think this is great so yeah you know then they'll buy it from you and then they'll sell it to somebody else and somebody else and somebody else but the price really was way down here and people are just figuring that out and the person that sold down here probably thought that he was making the greatest profit but you know it's all the way up here but real in reality it's down here and markets eventually converge with what their stock price truly is and will he like eventually do you like some of these companies that crash do you think they'll eventually reach that what they were once at, like their highest peak, and that will be the, you know, what their actual value is, but it will take a few years from now? There's a potential, but like some of these companies got their price shot up way too high because they were being kind of just, money just piled into them, and so people got ahead of themselves. So some of these companies are going to pull back, and investors are going to say, these companies aren't worth anything. There's a lot of EV companies out there right now that don't even have a single product built. Right. Yet alone a factory. And <laughs> it's just kind of... An idea. you got to ask yourself at some point, huh, they don't have a factory and they have no orders for the future. So how much is this company really worth? It doesn't even sound like a company. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like an idea. Hey, Johnny, you want to yeah. announce that we have an EV product and then just you know sell it to the market and be like, well, Johnny has a sketch. Johnny, show him the sketch, and it's just you doodling a car on a <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> hey, dude, I think that we could get this thing to be electric-powered. We had, yeah. Oh, dude, that's awesome. We hire some engineer just like to, to make it sound. We hire audit just to make it sound like really right. you know like extravagant and uses all these big <laughs> words. Get in there and, yeah, <laughs> you can get in there and describe like, technical details about batteries and people like writing it down whoa dude this sounds incredible man well, meanwhile it's already been done and another company <laughs> that actually yeah, has it tesla tesla's actually done it or you know, right it's, it's just so somewhat somewhat kind of funny because we, we we have these companies that are fully able to do stuff like that and, and that's kind of like where like the the bubble pops those companies are left like tesla is going to have its share price might, might be brought down with it right with like the, the bubble but that's not a company that's going to go under they literally i see tesla cars on the street yeah like, that's a company that really brings in money as a plan and actual products for the future not just some random guy with like a, a doodle <laughs> or, like a car in the background and, and an says, llc like, i think <laughs> yeah i think that this thing could work people oh wow <laughs> like, this is gonna be the new yeah. tesla he just speaks passionately about it. He speaks passionately about it, pounds the table, kind of like Dwight does during that speech. You know, <laughs> yeah, pounds yeah. the table. And people are just, yeah, yeah. That's that's like a shareholders meeting right there. It's, it, it's kind of funny because a clip from The Office really depicts like what like kind of the hype is around these companies. You know, people pounding the table and he's like, yes, like this is going to be it. And it's just not even close, but people are all excited about it. And that's, that's the problem. People get so excited about stuff. Right. And it's not able to actually pan out isn't it weird it's funny it's funny like because like he did it in that episode of the office like it it it, it's such a good analogy actually because he you know the person that told him like that kind of you know taught him to do it (laughs) said that completely lied which was jim he said that he like majored in public speaking or whatever (laughs) and like just printed off a bunch of uh speeches of these like powerful leaders and that's exactly what dwight did he just like copied what they were you know 
their posture and like everything and like that that's so like relevant in a way because these companies not you know like especially in like with cryptos like you know they're they'll be saying all these like things like you know this is a game changing you know like this is the evolution of technology this is the next best thing yeah. you guys got to hop in on and it. they'll have like just a really nice excited. website like and it scrolls easy and it just looks good and mm-hmm. sounds good but right it doesn't necessarily because they have the right name anything. and the right branding but it's not actually a, a real product it's just some it's just you know what those people need they need to get their marketer people like a raise yeah yeah because this is this is 10 times the amount of work that they should be doing marketers and are con men <laughs> no, i'm kidding right but it's also i kind of don't feel for these people or these hedge funds that got wrapped up in this stuff oh, no. because what you should do and what i i learned kind of through my time in college is that when you're going to invest in stuff you need to make sure that everything's audited right and that means people went in there and double checked and said, yep, this, this stock looks, looks good. Right. We checked it and the numbers that they have are exactly what they say they are. <laughs> Instead of just some Joe Schmo in the background that's got his cubicle and he just puts up, Hey, Andy, are those numbers correct? <laughs> he looks up. Yeah, I think so, bro. Yeah. He's like they're, tossing, they look good to me. Tossing a ball against the wall while he's doing it. <laughs> yeah. He's just bouncing stuff and he has these like little pieces of paper that he doodles on and throws in the trash, but he missed all the shots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he's always like, Andy, Andy, what should we say about, what should we say uh, we're coming up with next? He's like, I don't know, man. Uh, just make something up on the something about Tell cloud computing. On drone. Yeah. <laughs> drone cloud computing drones. Just use that in the same <laughs> sentence. They'll be into Dude, it. <laughs> literally it's crazy. Like, they're flying around making different cloud computing technologies. Everybody will hop in. Oh my gosh, man! It's a it's it's next level of stuff these guys are doing. I mean, bravo to the marketers, you know, bravo. I mean, it kind of just shows to like the gullibility of people once a, a, a company sounds legit and they have an established name. Yeah. And they're able to hop on there and say, "Yeah, yeah, this is a, our greatest product product ever. This could change the humankind. All of mankind right. will be affected by this stuff." And it just kind of really makes you think that if you're going to be an investor in a company, you need to take a step back and actually be able to analyze these companies before just jumping in and going home. And that's why it's starting to look like a good time because in market crashes like that, and especially the one that like we might be headed towards, especially for overinflated things like the EV market, um, it's just like a good time to have companies that are actually worth money because that's what investors are going to be looking for, companies that you know have an actual product and growth opportunities for the future, right. not just random r- random gambles. Do you th- do you think that, be- like because of what like what you just said, do you think that a lot of investors will start putting more money into companies that are super you know stable and have shown their value, like Tesla or Amazon? That could be a possibility for the future, but it's going to take the market sell off before this happens. Because as of right now, all these people are making bank yeah. just trading Joe Schmo's pop shop with Andy working in the background again yeah. just saying yeah dude this is pretty cool and as long as the investors are buying that stuff and eating up what he says then the company's going to get on a roll until something bad happens and and, and you know what's you know what's crazy uh, and I, like speaking about these you know marketers essentially like a company could so easily hire because I see these videos all the time a company so, could so easily hire a you know a 20 year old guy to make YouTube videos talking about how this, you know, stock or this crypto, you know, it's going to shoot up, get in now, like, <laughs> you know, like, and then that, that used to be illegal, actually, to like have all these people meet up or just illegal things within companies. So like kind of spoof the market and then you and your boys just, you know, you don't you're like, I think <laughs> this company's going to crash and you're a big time reporter. And yeah. then as soon as it crashes, you buy the bottom and then everybody's kind of like, wait, why are they going to crash? And right. And they come out and they're like, actually, I was kidding or I don't know, man. And then it just bounces back up and he just, thank you. I bought it out of this bottom. Right. Thanks for everybody like giving me the opportunity to do that. Dude, yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. Like that, like, why isn't that, you know, that's misinformation, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's misinformation. And and those people belong behind bars, especially for just ripping people off. Yeah. But I guess it kind of shows the power of unregulated media and stuff. And I know in like America, we talk about free speech and stuff, but looking at stuff like that, like 
either like the people need to be more responsible and so we need to tell them or inform them about like the possibilities of these misleading media sources or they need to be like checked somehow yeah and so that people aren't getting screwed because the average investor just kind of is just investing based off of what they see around them oh when the cryptocurrency is going up 20 percent every day that sounds great yeah let me get in now cool. Let me get in now. It's gone up 400%, but there's another 400% past that if I can get in. Yeah, that, that is always the thing. Like, you, you'll see, like, I'll see at least, like, a crypto that went up 400%, and then it's like, oh, geez, like, I'm missing out. Because then I'll see, like, another crypto mm -hmm. that went up 1,000%, and it's like, so this one could still go up another 600%. And so then, you know, you buy it, and then it just drops, like. Right. As it should, and as eventually... I find that sometimes when I'm doing um, my work and trading stocks, it's almost like you have to fight those instincts because that's exactly where you're wrong. Right. And it's like as soon as you do that and then it crashes, you, you knew that like some reason you should be getting in. So if you can get yourself to like understand that and see that that's like, a, actually a bad time, then you'd be actually able to, to be more in like the loop of like when it actually is going to crash and stuff. And you know, if it goes on a few extra days, Right, and it's going up like another two hundred percent. You know, it might be tempting, but definitely it's something that you gotta like resist the urge to kind of do, and that's how you get better as an investor. As an investor, and then uh, I know we we talk about this: the difference between being an investor and being a trader. What, right. So, what what role does the trader does a trader have in? Uh, you know, are they making money throughout this entire bubble? Like, do they? Mm. Do you think like? I, I feel like traders are the ones that like, get hard, hit hardest the most because they trade in such like a short term span, right. you know, a week or two, and it takes like a while for these sell offs to happen. So if it follows as a trader, you might be thinking, "Wow, this is the greatest time to get in! Like I'm gonna sell some sell some contracts," and then it goes down even more. And then, okay, okay, now now is the right <laughs> time to get in. Okay, I'm gonna sell even more. You know, right. Sell some more puts, and then it goes down even more. And it's like, okay, for real, now it's the best time to get in. You know. That's when you catch yourself making 10%, 20% portfolio losses and just because you were over anxious and not giving it a chance to work itself out. Right. In terms of the price. When you see that, you got to recognize it. And it, t it comes with like, experience and stuff. But we'll also talk about it here on the show and I'll give my opinions on stocks. But awesome. it, it just comes with experience. Is When something's crashing, don't be the first one to hop into it because it's not just the best buying opportunity. You know? Yeah. And that kind of speaks towards what's going on in cryptos. It, I mean, it just had that massive sell off. Michael Burry called it. Mm -hmm. We don't know where the bottom is. We, we have no idea. It could sell off an additional 20%. Like do you, that sounds possible, right? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, and until it shows like signs of having a local minimum, which we talk about all the time where it's just like a bottom point in the stock. And it seemed to have hold that, that like, point for a while and not gone below that point then maybe that's a safe point to invest upon but that takes a few weeks or months to establish so don't just see cryptos crashing right now and then a little bounce back up as the greatest buying opportunity of your life right and maybe give it a second because the best gains happen all at once in terms of crypto you know when they get on those big rips and they're, they're cruising the upside that's when it's the time to get in if you're trading right right yeah that's that's a that's great advice uh don't get in when you see it, like when you see it crash the first time. Don't be the first. Right. Buyer. That's a, right. <laughs> Don't. Mm -hmm. It's not just unless it's in a period of hotness, you know. Yeah. Where it's 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 hot every single day except for this one day in in a week where it, it's turned around. Maybe that's like an opportunity. But if it falls the next day, I would be out. Yeah. Because you, you never know when you're in on the beginning of a sell off, and you don't want to be caught on that because every single time it drops down, you always think, oh, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Yeah. It's now now it's the bottom, and then you look down and you you're like two thousand dollars just became five hundred, and just like where to go? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, and, and then and then you end up selling there, and then that's the bottom. Right, right. And then it goes back up, and you're just like, damn it. Gosh, yeah, every <laughs> instinct I have is wrong. <laughs> right, but, it, you know, you can train yourself to see stuff like that and not make as many investments when it's crashing, and that's kind of important because, you know, you want to get that money back, but you just got to gotta believe that, you, you know, you're always wrong. Think about it that way. Yeah. You're wrong in terms of, like, when it starts selling off. So maybe just give it a second to cool. Like, if I could go back and tell myself being an investor what I know now, 
that would be it. Just like when things sell off, it's not the next buying opportunity because I've lost more money than I want to admit. Right. Doing stuff like that. Yeah. Especially when it's not the right time. That's great advice. <clears throat> that, yeah, that really is. I'm, I, I talk about it. I think I talked about it on one of our shorts that we talked uh, that are posted actually on our, our website pretty soon. But it, it's about how making money is great, but maintaining the money that you have and not losing your money is way better because you know, it's great to make. Uh, let's say you turn three thousand dollars into four thousand dollars. Well, if you did that and then it drops down to a thousand dollars, then did you? It didn't even work well for you. Right. <laughs> You were in for a little high, and then you know after that you came for the crash, and you don't want that. You want to make money consistently, up, 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 up. And 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 the the short that Roy's talking about is uh, we 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 have a so like a solo clips of Roy kind of explaining in further depth what he's talking about when it comes to you know handling losses and whatnot. Uh, right. And we'll put a link for sure to one of the uh, episodes because it's gonna have its own playlist on our show. We'll put a link in the description of this episode. Right on, and we are, we've kind of been saying it from like the beginning, but we value you guys' opinions on stuff like this. Yes. I, I'm very much down to hear new opinions about just stuff like that. Right now, the works that I've been kind of working with are kind of my own analysis that I've seen over five or six years of trading. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that I have the most experience or the best knowledge and stuff like that, just kind of what I've seen and what has worked for me. Right. But maybe there's another bigger reason behind that that explains more than what I'm able to explain right now. And if you guys have that kind of knowledge or know where I can find that, like that's awesome. But I'm here to kind of create a learning community with you guys and we're gonna try to learn more together. And you know, you guys learn, we learn. It's all just the best the best times to, you know, be in the market and learn together. Because making money is great, but it's even better when it's with your boys. Oh yeah, definitely. Everything's better with the boys, you know. Right, like because and, then you and, and the girls, nice we're, not, we're not excluding, you know, we don't. We're right, not right. <laughs> the boys, meaning like all of us, like the dudes, yeah. the dudettes, <laughs> the everybody dudettes. belongs here. I don't, know, I don't know. That's what came to my mind. You, you ever have a teacher that greets you? Hey guys, mor morning, welcome to class. You dudes and dudettes. Uh, no, they would probably get fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing to fire them about. I know. Just I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. Around. This is like a real goof, and then people are just like. You, you just like kind of put your hand down. And you're just oh shit, not one of these teachers. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a dude. I'm a dude X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I actually identify as uh, two times the dude. So <laughs> uh, I'm a, <laughs> put my both my hands up in there to solve it. I'm a double. I'm a double dude. I'm a double man. <laughs> I'm a double man. Yeah. What where, where where's my salute? So so let's talk uh, a little bit about candlesticks because I think it's mm -hmm. important that. Uh, our audience understands, you know, uh, what they are, what they do. Right on. I, I believe that that's a great thing. And I actually want to give a shout out to somebody. Um, I know they talked to not want their name on the air, but um, I'm not going to give them their full name, but we want to give a, a shout out to Tracy V from Nevada for this question. He needed a little better information on um, candlesticks. And I'm really happy to uh, that we're getting questions now and I, i'm here for you guys and so i want i want to make sure i explain stuff that you guys are looking at there's no question that you can submit to me that's that's too dumb or anything like that because starting out in the stock market it, there's a lot of stuff going on i'm just trying to make it easier for you guys yeah and and ask the questions because they help me as well you know Right, and we're all trying to learn. Maybe you ask us questions that you know we haven't even thought of before, and that, that's just like a very good thing to think about. But as we dive into the candlesticks here, how do we explain these? You see a bunch of green and red, green and green and green. You know, you can kind of follow it with, you know, if you made it a line, you can see like the, the drop down and the increase here. But when you're looking at a candlestick, what it exactly means is you have this right here, and um, it, it's kind of it's kind of blends in with the marker, but it's got the point down here, which is like a little like dip off of the green square mm -hmm. or the green rectangle. That right there indicates its lowest point throughout the day at the bottom of that right right here. So I'm guessing that's just under twenty seven point five or somewhere around twenty seven point like three five or something like that. And what what 
and what does it mean to like kind of see the bottom of something like that? You got the top, and this is the the point at which it's reached its highest point throughout the day up here, and the green movement throughout it from here to here up is this is at the bottom where it started its day off down here. Okay. Like when the market opened, it was worth something around just under twenty seven point five dollars, and at the end of the day, it finished up here which is roughly around $29 and um, $29.94 is where it says it closed. So that's the amount of gain that it had on the day. This is the high on the day, which was somewhere up around 31 and the low on the day was 27.3 or something like that. And, it's, and that's how you read a green one. So this is a three month look at this stock. Right, okay. so. But well, what we are indeed looking at is one day changes though. As you can see on the bottom, we've got 419, 420, and then 421 in terms of the movement here. But you're seeing the day changes overall in these stocks. Like this company kind of had a big shoot up sometime throughout the day and then ended up you know, coming back, but it still, made, it still ended up going up throughout the day but it, it didn't go all the way to its highs. So that's how you should be reading these green ones. And when you look at something like the red one, the red one is just the opposite of that. This is the high up here, right there with that little stick poking out. Yeah. And then here it is at the bottom, which is lows for the day right here. So it looks like it's lows were somewhere around 26 and it's highs sometime throughout the day was around 33. Dang. And it started the day at around 32.5, but then dropped down to a price of $28. And so that's how you read these. It started here, and then at the end of the day, it finished here. And this was its high up here, and this was its low down here. Okay. Cool. And, and, I, and I think and it's essential for people to know this because when you look at a when you look at a um, graph of it right yeah you're not able to see these are kind of just the averages of what it did you know right up and down but you're not able to see the highs and the lows of it and those are important to know because you'll be able to check stuff like if it was looking to break out past a certain point based off of its highs or its lows and these are essential to see because the line really just looks like this where it just kind of goes up and then down and down again like if we were to look at the line gonna look a lot like that yep highs lows and then came back down but what we're missing is that it had this opportunity to go above here and then it faced resistance and these are all things that we'll cover later on as we get into the podcast and stuff and what like are important measures and highs and lows but it, it just showed that like and we'd be able to see that it tried to get above its high but had it failed and then it came back down and then it sold off in the next few days if it would have gotten just, above its high, would it have stayed? Like shot up and this one was green? Yeah, would it have stayed there? So that's what we kind of are going to look into in like the future. Just gotcha. sort of something around like the probability of like this one is green, how far it could potentially cruise on up and, you know, shoot past it. But when we're looking at it, you see how this is kind of like it's high in terms of like the stock over here. Yeah. Like it's at its high point, it was up here. So if you saw that and you're basing your other one around something like this or this, you know, mm -hmm. then and you're seeing that it was about to like it's cruising on up, and you're like, all right, this might be its chance to like break out and go, go even higher. Right. You know, and then you see something like this, and you're like, actually, it got up to its, a high point, and then it fell. And I'd be a little worried at that point because I was just like, well, I was hoping it'd go up, but you know, looks like it had a bunch of resistance. And you know, we'll look at like technical analysis. This is really the starting of how to start a technical analysis, but we'll talk more on that later as we get like further and further into like more shows. But I want to make sure people have the basics. Right, here. right. And that's just kind of how it is. Tracy, we thank you for your question. We hope you write into us a lot more. We're happy to hear it and we're happy to talk about stuff that you guys want to hear on here. Shout out Tracy. Shout out Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> he He's definitely making those money moves and any... You know, as as you progress, you know, you're gonna you're gonna kinda look back one day and you're gonna be like, Wow, I really do I really have amassed a lot of information just by doing this and you know. And it, it's good because those are things that you you know, you might see in like different places, not just stocks, you know. And so we're here to teach people about all sorts of things. Yeah. That yeah, I mean and that's that's huge, especially 
uh, being just being able to read the read like read the candlesticks, I feel like is, you know, most people, the average person can't. So if you can do it, right, it's, it's just a huge advantage. But it's very doable. It's very doable, right. and we're here to help help the people learn and actually pick up those skills to like read that, because that will make you a better trader. And we're all about the ROIs on the show. Oh, yeah. and so if you give us a little bit of your time, we're gonna definitely help you understand some stuff here. And and so for that. For those candlesticks, what was that company you were looking at? Oh, yeah, that's a great point. We're, we were looking into a company called RXRX, which is actually a company that we wanted to talk about here on the show. RXRX is Recursion Pharmaceutical. And now, what we're not saying is that we're any sort of pharmaceutical expert. There's a bunch of pharmaceutical companies out there, and they, you know, this one just kind of newly came out. And, you might be wondering kind of like what's special about them. You know, they do have bigger competition with Johnson & Johnson and like these big pharma companies. But, you know, what's what's special about them, right, is that they have a predictive analytics model that's able to kind of take its data in and come up with predictive analysis about why people have these like kind of pharmaceutical problems or what's causing it at its root. and. I don't know. It's just something like that, using coding and machine learning to kind of understand this stuff and being at the forefront of this, especially with new diseases. Right. It, it's just ideas like that that have really, you know, served me well. You know, when you look at something, you're like, damn, that really could kind of work. You know, right. that could be something of the future. Just the question with stocks like this is, does it have enough assets? Did it take on too much debt before it got into the market? Does it owe people too much money to stay afloat? And so, so what you're saying essentially for this company is that they take information, like say a client, someone sends in, you know, they're a, they're six one, and they're Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, they take that information, and what, what do they do with it? So they have a giant data set because they collaborate with a lot of different people. Okay. And they have a giant data set and they are able to break it down because they have people just kind of like labeled with different attributes and stuff. And so if they kind of see like, you know, this like person, you know, has kind of like a different you know, chance of like this disease than like this person or even with like, I mean, that's kind of maybe not its main focus. Its main focus is being able to predict a drug's success or something uh. along those lines with that based off of analysis of, it does some crazy stuff. It does machine learning to learn about genes and biomes and stuff like that within the cell of the company. And it uses predictive analysis to see if like this will work and what kind of um, things will actually pay off and stuff. Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> so, And that's what I'm saying. And it's stuff like that. You know, that's a crazy cool idea. And what I'm not saying is, I'm not saying this is a good trade. This is not anything that I would be like, yes, I would like to trade this with a call or some sort of a put. Right. I'm talking about a long-term hold here. You know, you literally just buy the stock. We're talking to you about investing here with this stock. And we're talking to you about, all right, you know, it's got a chance that it's going to pull back because you got these like red daggers here and those usually aren't good signs. Mm -hmm. But that's the short term. We're talking about you look at your portfolio in 10 years and you see that the stock's at $300 or something. You know, that's That'd that type crazy. of investing that I'm talking about. Yeah, but like eventually companies catch up with what they're fundamentally worth and what they're fundamentally worth is what their ideas are. Right. You know, and it's just like how good is their marketing and stuff to like bring this stuff to market. Right. You know, and how much do they spend trying to get all this money? Like if, and that will show. Like, if they're not spending a lot, like a company like this, if they're not spending a lot of money, like. Would, to like grow. Yeah. Well, to, to, but see that, see, like how we were talking earlier about, you know, these companies that, you know, like Dwight doing a big pound, like the pounding thing, <laughs> like how, like how could we tell that this isn't one of those? Right. And, and that's kind of where, what we talked about in one of those short analysis things and pieces like that are going to be on the site soon is that these companies can be looked at like what you can do is you can go in and you can check out something like the statistics behind it and this is a new company so a lot of data isn't in there 
But you, you just got to see by, like, metrics and stuff. Like, what are they spending their money on? What we really need to do, because this is such a new company and has just s super, like, slow and, like, just not a ton of information about it, is just we need to see the kind of stuff, like, how much, like, cash does it have? It looks like it got, like, over 200 million cash. And what one thing I was talking about is, is, like, how much debt does it have? And it doesn't have too much debt, yeah. and it has, like, enough money to pay stuff off. But what that could potentially mean is when, in terms of the current ratio, it doesn't have too much debt, which might be good. Maybe they have, like, some people that are really good at making deals and stuff. Right. But it's also it might be worrisome because it's like, okay, but aren't you guys trying to grow? So, like, that would be good for you guys. Right. Because you need to take money out and spend money to try to figure out new ideas and new technologies and stuff. So, you know... It's questions like that. They definitely have their own unique process, and I wanted to introduce that to people in the market. Maybe you guys check it out and you like it. Maybe you come back and tell me next week it was absolute trash, you know, based off your analysis. I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear what you guys are talking about. And, you know, I'm trying to introduce to you guys a new idea of something that might be a big part of our future here in America. I mean, that, that's that's something. That's, that's insane. The type of technology now that's coming out you know like even with the evs ev companies it's just like there's so many d new types of technology to or technology companies to invest in it's like where do you start you know where where do you start to look right where's what would you say for you like the big you know innovation like what what company or what industry do you see? I'm, I'm looking for companies that are you know, kind of in like one of our segments, you know, companies that are new to the market that have hype around them because they have good ideas, but you know, aren't too big of names. Cause like right. those, those really big names like Apple, that doesn't move. That's like boring. Right. You know, you never want to trade that. You'd make a ROI of like 0. 0.0005%. <laughs> like I'd rather just go give my money to like my roommate and be like, Hey dude, do you think you could like play like a bunch of gambling games yeah. and try to figure out if you can make more than that like this that's like such a small return and it's just not the way i want my money to work for me gotcha you know it's all about letting your money do more work than you do for it you know yeah yeah it's definitely easy to get caught up in uh like doing the work for the money like like if you're like and that's great that's great you should be like about what you do right and like it but know what you're doing <laughs> Right. You should also know <laughs> that's like the greatest, like, yeah, you also need to know what you're doing and you need to know like why that, you know, why it's important and more so reasons when you put your money into the market, you know, and you see it growing, you know, you're making it work harder for you than you are for it. And in some ways that's kind of alleviating, right? you know, because you have that ability to put money in and, it, you know, it's not just fixed at what they give it to you at, you know, if you don't like that, like, like two thousand dollar check or whatever or the thousand dollar check that you're getting put in the market and you know like get in on investing at least move small percentage over and get your your money in there and you know you'll see those investments grow throughout times so if you like invest in good companies that have bright futures right yeah so invest invest <clears throat> and we're not invest early invest early you know get get your butt in here at a young age like that's who we want to appeal to as well like people want to get we want to get them excited for being in the market you know we talk about there being a like a like sell-off coming sometime but you know if you're picking companies and you understand why sell-offs happen and you're also able to see you know what companies survive sell-offs and you know get a grasp on stuff like that you know that takes experience and stuff but if you're able to do that you know you're going to start learning so take it seriously get invested early and you know this stuff i mean we're not like miracle workers here like me and johnny but like we're picking it up and we're able to kind of like start figuring it out it just takes like getting in there and doing anything it all comes with experience it all comes with experience guys yeah so so i mean that's you you've given a lot of good advice today you know it all comes oh, yeah. with experience Thanks, no i'm serious it all comes with experience you know don't don't be the first one to buy in after uh you know it drops you know yeah as michael burry says on his his speech he said there's trading at speculative speculative levels and the market is dancing on a knife's edge <laughs> there you go and so you know when it sells off it might not be like 
time to just hammer in because you never what they what they say in the market is you never want to catch a falling knife and a falling knife and i'm glad that we talked about candlesticks because this is um kind of like a slang or something for what this looks like you know right here when you do 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 falling knife this this right here is a falling knife. It is on its way down, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, that's the bottom right there. Oh, yeah. Let me stand and, under know. it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stand under and try to catch that. You know, you'd never trust yourself to catch, like, an actual knife right. unless you're, like, in the carnival or something. Yeah, there you, know? you wouldn't want to catch this knife either because you see how it was red? Yeah. That's what your portfolio and that's what your hands are going to look like after. There you go. Because you're bleeding. You're just, the money's bleeding on out of you. You're catching a falling knife. You know? What a great analogy. I like that phrase. Yeah. I like that. I like that phrase a lot. I'm glad Michael Burry said Yeah, that. yeah, me too. That's not only funny, but that's also great advice from him. And I think, I think, you know, it's, it's cool because Michael, Michael Burry, you know, he doesn't get on there and talk a lot about, like, stuff, you know. He gets on there and he tells you what he, he like, thinks a lot of thinks about it a lot and then you know that's the greatest part about him he gets on there and he's just like okay this is like where i think it's gonna go he doesn't make like a million different like projections he's just like yeah a few things you know right this will like fall or you know that will fall or something like that he's not just like everything's gonna fall <laughs> you know? yeah I, and i like that i saw that he even like uh because i know that he's not like a huge fan of big tech but he was saying mm -hmm. that he doesn't think big tech is gonna have too big of a crash right well it's because like you know, although those names are pretty, uh, you know, big and like they have big like analysis and market caps, like heck, Apple's is over a trillion. Like their company's worth over a Gosh. trillion dollars, right? With like all their stuff intact. In but like, the thing is, like they might actually be worth a million dollars, like yeah. or is, like coming to be like pretty soon, be worth a million dollars, a trillion, trillion. dollars. Because, like, pe so many people have iPhones, yeah. so many people use that every single day, so many people Apple like, watches. like their. Apple watches and it's all just kind of like a pyramid scheme you know they're selling all this crap yeah. and don't actually need it but you know people are buying it it's not it, not like it's a mystery if people have it's it. like the same if you think about it it's almost like the same product just like made in a different shape <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just like you know how we get this person to buy this phone yeah what's up Andy yeah tell us about it okay so hear hear me out on this one we just make it bigger yeah and we call it an iPad yeah Dude, this is crazy. Yo, you got that written down in the back over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says make them bigger. <laughs> yeah. We'll make it, and we'll call it the plus. That way they know, yeah. like, just all these little the things. The iPad plus, so that's the next thing, you know. Is your computer screen too big, but, you know, your iPad's not big enough? Here with what we got for you. The thing in between that, you know. Right. Uh, the plus. The tablet. iPad plus. Next thing you know, you, you know. know. You can carry it around, and it doesn't actually, like... When you turn like one side into the other, you know it doesn't actually hit the person to the side of you like <laughs> a computer would, but you know, right. it's just big enough that you know you have to check it in with like when you get the airport security. Just these little changes, little changes make the difference yeah. for Apple. I mean, it's just funny because like there, it's just so funny to think about like the hype because people get like really hyped up for that and be like, I need ten of those I know, like, right? now. <laughs> it's just like why you don't need ten of Dude, those, it, but just because it's a new product, people like it. It's pretty crazy. To think about like i like if you don't have you know an updated iphone like an up-to-date iphone it's like you're you, you know you're kind of screwed like that thing is not gonna right. be do, they and don't they do that on purpose they yeah they do that on purpose they you know i was talking to a guy and i was like hey wouldn't like an apple employee and i was like wouldn't it be possible for apple to one day you know like they make battery improvements and i'm like isn't one day they're just gonna make a battery that you never need to charge and he's like no I was like, why? Because it's like hard to do. He's just like, no, they can do it. It's just people won't come in to buy new phones and like get chargers and stuff from Apple. Dang. I'm just like, yeah, but like, there's like nothing wrong with that. They're running a business. Yeah, there. no, that makes sense. So like, like they're gonna make improvements better, just enough so you want to stay. But you know, they're not gonna, you know, they want you to come back and buy more. Right. So like, they do a real good job of that too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, Apple's... The marketers on that team deserve a raise. Oh, yeah, they do. They're, they're up there <laughs> pounding their fist with, uh, you know, they're pounding their fist about something that's already been, you know, I feel like it's already it's already there. Right. But it's definitely just something that, like, you know, they, they see small improvements on it and they're like, this will get them to buy a nice... We're, we'll call the phone, like, the new casing on the phone, not, like, LED, but, like, you know, it's LED Platinum Reserve, <laughs> right. like... 
Systems two. You know, <laughs> damn, that's that's crazy, bro. I mean, if you think, <laughs> like, I need that, it. That actually is kind of what happened when they came out with the iPhone C. Like it was just right. the iPhone, but you had a colored back. You could have like blue or something. <laughs> like it's a oh, wow, dude. You know, yeah. I, I just got this one phone, but I, I I need to go out now and get this other phone. What? It's like a five hundred dollar increase. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Like, let's go. It's Apple, dude. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's Apple. Like this guy who was waiting in line. I was talking to him. And he was just like, I just can't wait to get like the new upgrade, bro. Oh my like, I, I just need that. You know, every <laughs> single year I get the new upgrade. I'm like, okay, nerd. Yeah, what like, the heck? <laughs> like you don't need that. Like your phone works kind of fine unless you like threw it into the snow or something. In that case, you're just kind of wild. Yeah. And uh, I think it, I think it was the dictator. Uh, mm -hmm. Or yeah, it was the dictator. Or, like Borat. It's like he moves to America and. He and he he was like a dictator or something, at, in his old, former country. And then he moves right. to America and he's like, he sees like a friend or something. He's like, so what do you do now or whatever? He's like, I I'm an Apple genius. And then he's like, oh, what? So what do you do? He's like, I clean uh, jizz out of the computer, uh, out of the keyboard. <laughs> like it's just funny. Yeah, dude, it's just definitely like, oh my gosh. Although it does sound like working at Apple wouldn't be like the worst. No, thing, no, so it, it's just we'll it's just a funny joke. No, you definitely got to know your you got to know what you're doing if you're working right. at Apple. Definitely being able to like you know be like a little, at least a little bit smart or personable, you know. Right. But, you know that also comes with the job too. You knew what you're getting into. People people are just going to be using that stuff in just the wrong way. Yeah, for real. So <laughs> yeah, that is true. But well, this has been a great episode, man. Yeah, this has been one of, I think this has been one of our better ones, and I enjoy getting better and, like, learning with our community as well. Yeah, me as well. In each, each episode, you know, it's going to it's gonna get better and better, and then we're going to have more uh, information on the website. Website's constantly being, you know, it's, we're updating it. Uh, by the time right by the time this comes out, uh, we'll have the, at least, we'll have for <laughs> sure uh, the clip that we were talking about um, in terms of handling losses up on the website. Right. And we want to hear you guys' feedback about that, you know. Definitely like and subscribe. Hit us with any comments that you have on that. If there's something that I went over too fast, something that you want to explain more, no question is too dumb. We just want to see you guys get better. So let us know what you can do. Shout out to Tracy one more time. Shout out to Tracy. Question. And <laughs> he's making those money moves. Yeah. And... You know, we look forward to catching you guys on the next podcast. All right. Well, thank you for listening, guys. This has been Roy's podcast. We are mm. signing out. See you guys.